Hello, I'm Jamie Younger, and this is If You Knew Me, a podcast about the inner lives of women. Every week, we walk into the heart and mind of one woman. Every guest can choose to share her real name or to stay anonymous. This week, we hear from Carmel. That's her real name. Carmel has been working on her memoir. It's about losing her mom when she was 11 years old. During the writing process, something perplexing has begun to happen to her. Her story is entitled, Hello, Pet. At the moment, I'm thinking a lot about how grief shows up in the physical body, um, presenting as pain or blockages and sometimes serious illnesses. And it's not something I talk about much, but I've been dealing with abdominal pains for most of my life and lately other ailments. Um, And as someone whose mother died 30 plus years ago, I can attest to how grief shows up in the physical body. My mother died when I was 11 and she got sick when I was five. And I watched her suffer a lot. She went in and out of hospital for many months um, at a time. And then towards the end of her life, I witnessed her body and her energy deteriorate drastically. I've always had stomach issues. There were some foods I couldn't eat as a child, and we never really figured out what they were, but certain foods caused different ailments. And as a teenager, my stomach pains persisted and increased somewhat, and then I got recurring sore throats. Um, And at the time, people said the pains were growing pains, and they advised me to swim and get more exercise. But I wasn't a sedentary person. I've always enjoyed playing active games and swimming and dancing. And when I was in college, I experienced frequent stomach pains. And my college roommate actually always associates stomach pain with me. And that's how I know I must have had a lot of them. I've never been able to eliminate the pains, but I'm better able to manage them now. But in the last few years, I've had some other symptoms appear, like shooting, stinging pains in my body and aching muscles and eye pain and other unusual symptoms that no doctor can diagnose or explain. The curious thing is that the new symptoms began to appear when I started writing my memoir. I've seen... Lots of different practitioners, naturopaths, acupuncturists, lots of different practitioners who haven't been able to really put their finger on anything. During the pandemic, when I was visiting with a new massage therapist, she seemed to believe that all the ailments and physical symptoms I was experiencing had something to do with a past trauma or something that I had gone through. And she asked me about that. And I told her that my mother died 33 years ago, 34 now. She asked about how I was processing that or how I had grieved. And she didn't ask me very many questions because she just wanted me to think about it. But I began to kind of put two and two together that While I was writing briefly, I knew my mother, the symptoms started to really show up. I had noticed it to the point where I thought it was more an ergonomic issue, that perhaps I needed to get a better table and chair and so on, and I got all of that. And still, the symptoms are there. In my memoir, I take the reader along with me from when I was a young child into my teenage years through puberty and into the present while I'm bearing witness to my mother's illness and death when I was 11. There's a lot of joy in the book, too. I I certainly want to emphasize that. My childhood, aside from my mother's illness, was happy, and I was loved immensely by my parents. But with going back over all of what I had witnessed, 
my mother's illness and my family's heartbreak and so on, I was really beginning to process it all and to grieve what I had lost. I did cry while writing the memoir. And at the time I felt, oh, this is very therapeutic. But several years later, I'm still working on the project and it's a lot. And I've since heard from people who say we should all get therapists while we're writing our memoir. And I think that's good advice now. I'm working on the proposal at the moment, and I hope to begin querying the book soon. And I'm so ready to move away from the toughest part of this process and put my words out there into the world and set my story free. And I'm curious to see how my body will respond to that when the book is set free into the world. Writing the memoir kind of forced me to address and confront some things that I hadn't really confronted. I was able to see where I was as a little girl and really getting into the child's voice and putting that into the story, into the book, um, really forced me to go back to little me. I had a lot and have a lot of memories of back then, and I have diaries from back then. So it was easy for me to kind of put myself in little me's body and see through my eyes again. I read the diary and saw that I was getting sick pretty frequently in my mother's last weeks. Like I was getting kidney infections, ear infections, uh, stomach aches, and it was kind of one after the other. And looking back on it as an adult and reading all this one after the other, I thought that isn't really normal um, for a, a child of that age. And I was probably just so anxious. I got married while I was writing the book. And so I kind of began to contemplate what my parents had been going through. And I was able to look at my parents' loving relationship and feel their pain on both sides. Like my dad, what he was feeling watching his wife suffer so much and unable to fix anything. He was very loving and supportive, but he obviously wasn't able to help her get better to cure the illness. Um, and then looking at it from my mother's perspective, being away from her husband and children so often, missing out on so much and the fear of leaving us behind and not see us grow up. So I felt it all. I remember it very clearly. Um, I was 11. I had just turned 11 just two months before. There were a lot of people in the house. We had a lot of visitors at the time. Um, because she was so ill and she was very loved. So there were a lot of people coming to the house all of the time towards the end. And one particular night, one of my best friends was with me and her mother, who was a doctor, was there. And her mother asked me if I wanted to stay with my best friend that night. And I thought and I said no, because I knew mom didn't have very much longer left. And um, I knew I should be there. And so she said, well, let's go in and say goodnight to her because it was getting late. It was maybe 10 p.m. or something. And um, I went into the room and my mother had been in and out of consciousness at that point a little bit. And she was also sleeping a lot. I think to me, I just thought she was sleeping a lot, which she was. But I didn't really think about it as going in and out of consciousness. But then she... um. She looked over at me and said, hello, pet. There was a whole room of, of people there. And I was so thrilled that my mother recognized me and was able to acknowledge me. I said, hello or hello, ma'am. And then she, was, she went back asleep again. That was the night that she died. So I'm so grateful that I remember that. And I'm also so grateful that I had that connection with her at the very end. The other thing is that in my 20s, as a young woman, I began missing my mother. 
in a different way and longing to have that woman-to-woman relationship. And I still ache for that. And I was thinking even last night that I often use that word ache when I'm writing, that I still ache for her presence. When I witness mother-daughter relationships and see so many of my friends who still have their mothers, and it's wonderful. It brings me a lot of joy too, but there's still so much pain there for me. And I think the ache might be, again, manifesting as physical, the, the heartache. I just feel like certain times in my life I see or hear or um involved in some interaction between a mother and her daughter. It could be anything from their walking down the road, arms linked, smiling, laughing, talking about where they'll go for lunch or something like that. And I just think I have no idea. I can't even imagine what that must feel like. Um, or just when friends say, I'm going to ask mom about this, I think um, how comforting that must be to know that you have this woman who has known you your entire life um, kind of be there for you. And um, my wedding, I certainly missed my mother. And in the lead up, I missed her. But I was so grateful and I'm so grateful that my dad was there and to have had him because we're so close it meant the world to me that he was there and was able to be at my wedding so it's more times when it's more kind of a female situation like women together and that kind of thing that I feel the ache a lot thanks so much for listening to this week's episode Carmel Bronach is a teacher and a writer she's originally from Ireland She now lives in the U.S. Carmel has written a memoir entitled Briefly, I Knew My Mother, which she is about to begin querying. If Carmel's story spoke to you, take a moment and share it with one of your friends. And if you think that more people should know about this show, definitely rate us or leave us a review on your favorite listening platform. And I want to say, if you really love this show, I'd love to invite you to become a monthly member. When you make a contribution... It helps us produce this podcast. And in return, we provide you with regular, ongoing resources and tools for a rich inner life, like online events with inspiring women, meditations with well known teachers, and prompts for writing to your beloved friends and your future self. We really look forward to sending you our fantastic welcome package when you join us. The links for everything that I just mentioned are in the show notes. This podcast is produced by me, Jamie Younger, and my husband, Pete Herkmans. Thanks so much for listening to If You Knew Me. We'll be back with you next week.